Hi, Ted Valaker with Reason.TV. Recently in Park City, Utah, I had the pleasure of chatting with independent film legend Lloyd Kaufman. Greetings from Tromaville. I'm Lloyd Kaufman, president of Troma Entertainment and creator of The Toxic Avenger. Troma Entertainment is the herpes of the film industry. We will not go away. Troma Entertainment is the oldest independent movie studio, probably the longest running independent studio with 35 years under our cardboard belt. But we are definitely the longest running independent movie studio that has never had a hit. We had one kind of a hit single called The Toxic Avenger, New Jersey's first superhero, a hideously deformed creature of superhuman size and strength who is endowed with an ability to jump and he's got a mop. The South Park guys, uh, Trey Parker and Matt Stone's first movie was Cannibal the Musical, which uh, nobody wanted, and then uh, we distributed it. I think we helped them finish it. And uh, then uh, South Park uh, came about, and, and actually Trey and Matt are the ones who inspired the Troma Dance Film Festival. They wanted to submit their movie to the Sundance Film Festival. And uh, of course they didn't even get a fuck you letter back from Sundance. So they came out here and had their one movie film festival, Cannibal the Musical Film Festival, huge hit. And, um, and then um, that kind of led to Troma Dance because uh, Trey, Trey said we should maybe call it Troma because everybody hates Troma. <laughs> Troma Dance uh, Film Festival, the, the main thing is that it's a genuinely independent film festival. And it gives uh, truly independent filmmakers, it gives a venue for uh, the movies made for, uh, by, uh, by love of filmmaking, not by trying to put packages together or trying to figure out what Harvey Weinstein wants. Shakespeare was a shit disturber. And I don't think uh, uh, that the Sundance of Elizabethan age accepted uh, uh, Winter's Tale in their festival uh, back in the 1600s. Uh, a lot of his plays had to play beyond the walls of... Uh, of uh, London, and uh, sometimes Shakespeare had to play all, play with himself. So about 200 companies are members of Independent Film and Television Alliance, and the board of the Independent Film and Television Alliance has voted uh, unanimously to uh, hire, to, to spend a lot of money lobbying in Washington to try to educate the, the Congress and the FCC that uh, that independent art is, uh, is under assault, and uh, not just under assault, but uh, independent art is also under a pepper. If our country is to continue to have the innovation of independent movie studios, we cannot allow a small number of devil-worshipping international media conglomerates to control everything we see, read, and, uh, and hear. My latest book is Direct Your Own Damn Movie and uh, talks about how I've directed my own damn movies and how to do it my way. And also there are interviews with uh, many of the directors who have come out of the trauma, the trauma age. Uh, James Gunn, who directed Seizure and wrote Scooby-Doo and uh, we wrote Tromeo and Juliet together. Eli Roth, who went on to make Cabin Fever and Hostel and uh, he's hot, hot, hot. And uh, the, the South Park guys, I interviewed Trey and Matt. Uh, so there, there are a lot of sidebars with uh, successful directors. Penelope Spheris, of course. Penelope Spheris uh, talks not only about uh, comedy and uh, how to stay independent and do it, uh, how to be able to get movies done that, that uh, you truly believe in, but also uh, uh, about the, uh, the, the situation of being a gyno-American director. <laughs> I, I don't know why there aren't more gyno-American directors. I imagine it's just that the, the, there is an elite uh, uh, cabal that controls our industry. See, every movie I've written and directed, from The Toxic Avenger to Class of Newcomb High to Tromeo and Juliet, Terra Firma, Poultry Guy's Night of the Chicken Dead, the basic premise is that there is a small town of Tromerville and the, um, the conspiracy of, of elites, the labor elite, the, the labor leaders who are making uh, you know, millions of dollars uh, while their uh, rank and file are eating dog food, the, the bureaucratic elite, namely the Congress, and then the corporate elite. It's a yin and a yang. I majored in Chinese studies at Yale, and Taoism was what, what I, kind of the thing I came out with. The problem is, you, 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 unless you are, are in with the monopoly, uh, or the oligopoly, you cannot penetrate the hymen of the mainstream unless you get fucked. So it's very, very hard for the independent filmmaker to get his or her art to the public. The good news, however, is that there is, is, there is a tsunami of, uh, of um, uh, digital-aged movies. Now that the, the democratization of cinema has 
come on full strength, anyone can make a movie. When I made Battle of Love's Return in 1970, uh, that's the one that Oliver Stone was in, uh, it was a 16-millimeter movie, played in movie theaters, cost $8,000. In 1970, $8,000, probably today, $8,000 of 1970 would be a couple of hundred thousand. That's still a shitload of money. Uh, 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 Poultry Geist is $500,000. Poultry Geist is still, even though that's a tiny, tiny budget compared to uh, the pap that is on your local movie screen, but it's still a huge amount. You can start a lot of dress shops for $500,000. But now, with the, Democrat, the democratization of filmmaking, everyone can make movies. It's great. It's great.